It has been a crazy week in AI. There is a ton to cover in this video. We got a ton of updates on video models. We got some new large language models and a lot, lot more. So Midjourney released its first ever video model. And I'm going to hit play here. You can kind of see it running in the background. It looks pretty good. Is it at the quality of Kling and Vio? I would say no, not yet. But for a first model release, it is very impressive. It's interesting because Midjourney says generating a video with V1 costs about eight times more than making a single image. So you can actually see here what the plans look like if you want to access this model. There's also an automatic animation setting that just kind of makes things move and just adds motion to your image. And for launch, they are starting off with web only. And also it is going to create four five second videos. As I covered in last week's news segment, Midjourney is getting sued by Disney. And it is interesting because I've already seen a bunch of copyrighted material being generated. And it's gonna be interesting to see how that progresses in the courts. HeyGen just released something called product placement. You upload an avatar, you upload a product, you can have a script. It's going to combine it all into an ad that looks like this. Okay, I am absolutely in love with these ideas. So next time you're scrolling on social media, just remember that the person trying to sell you the product might not even be real. And speaking of being on social media and things not being real, Google made an announcement this week with YouTube and VO3. YouTube CAO has confirmed that the Shorts is getting an upgrade later this summer and the platform is going to integrate VO3 right into YouTube Shorts. There's a feature on YouTube Shorts right now called Dream Screen and it's where you can kind of record yourself with a background that you generate using VO2. So maybe they're going to be upgrading that. Maybe they have something totally different in mind. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Also on the Google front, they have released another Gemini 2.5 model. And this time around, it is called 2.5 Flash Lite. And you can see the pricing chart here. So you can see what it costs for thinking and non-thinking. So you kind of have to think, hey, what do I want my application to use? Do I want it a thinking model? Do I not want a thinking model? And you can see all the prices up on the screen. ChatGPT record mode is coming out to more users now. So it is launching today for pro enterprise and education users. And it previously launched for just team users on June 4th. So this will transcribe, summarize, it's going to take whatever you record and then turn it into something useful. So it can be like plans or code or like a follow-up to ask you stuff. And it's important to note that it is only available on macOS desktop app for right now. As a user of Claude Code myself, I think this announcement here is pretty exciting. Remote MCP support is now available in Claude Code. So they have this little demonstration video here showing it actually work. And this is very exciting. If you are a programmer and you haven't tried Claude Code, highly recommend it. I've been meaning to make a video on it and I should in the near future. And the configuration of the servers looks pretty easy to do as well with their instructions. Minimax released the world's largest reasoning context window model. I know that's like a lot of words. Basically, this model has a 1 million context window and it is a reasoning model, completely open source. And you can kind of see all the weighted models, open models. You can see all the stats here. And if you scroll down, you'll see all the benchmarks. So this is fully open source by Minimax, which is incredibly impressive. Minimax also released an updated video model and the results are absolutely insane. I think this might be the best model in terms of physics right now. It's just wild how good this looks. You can see like the clown riding the bike, how he shakes the cord. It is incredible, the, the wire, not the cord, but it is just absolutely incredible what we are able to generate right now. And this is in native 1080p, just incredible. It is important to note though, Minimax did change some of their plans. So if you had like an unlimited subscription plan before, you've been downgraded now. And also they are no longer giving out the 100 free credits per day that they once were just a few weeks ago. During a podcast this past week, Sam Altman said that Meta offered $100 million bonuses to OpenAI employees to join Meta. He went on to say that so far, their best people 
have not decided to take him up on that offer. And he heard that OpenAI is Meta's biggest competitor. In last week's AI news updates, I talked about how Meta has invested in scale AI, and I wonder if this is related, where Sam Altman is just trying to say, hey, this is happening, when it isn't, to try to make Meta employees upset that Meta's actively trying to hire people that are going to be paid hundreds of times more than what they are being paid. Or maybe it is true, I don't know. Meta also debuted its first Oakley smart glasses. So they have teamed up with Oakley this time, kind of similar how they've done so in the past with Ray-Ban. Apparently it's going to start at $399, but there's gonna be a special version at $499. It will be able to capture 3K quality video and have up to eight hours of typical usage, recharging 50% capacity in just 20 minutes. Similar to the Ray-Ban glasses, they're gonna be able to take photos, take videos, and connect to Meta AI. Higgs Field also has a new feature that they released this past week called Canvas. So it is a product placement feature. So you can see it here, you can change products within videos and you can see how it works where you can change the coffee cup to something else. In this example here, they're changing the can and the glasses or the purse and the shoes to get the exact shot with the exact look that you want. And the last piece of news I have for you, a UCLA graduate celebrated by showing off ChatGPT he used for his final product right before officially graduating. So you can actually see him here excited celebrating with ChatGPT. That is all the news for this week. If you enjoy AI content and you want to stay up to date with everything that is happening in the world of AI, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite news item of the week. Did I miss anything really groundbreaking? Let me know and don't forget to like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content. You want to see more of it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. You're meant to be